Hello and welcome to the Blue Open Studio tutorial video series. The topic of this video is TCP IP communication. In this video, we will be discussing TCP IP communication and the properties of the TCP IP communication worksheet. We will demonstrate configuring a TCP IP worksheet and communicating between two Blue Open Studio applications via TCP IP. So what does TCP IP mean? It stands for Transmission Control Protocol slash Internet Protocol. And to summarize, it is a suite of communication protocols used to interconnect network devices such as PCs on the internet. TCP IP implements layers of protocol stacks, each layer providing well-defined network services to the upper layer protocol. And how we establish TCP IP communication in Blue Open Studio is we have two runtime tasks, a TCP IP client and a TCP IP server. And these tasks enable two or more Blue Open Studio applications to synchronize their tag databases and communicate to one another updates in values for selected tags. Uh, these tasks use the TCP IP protocol to provide this communication bridge. So for example, we have one Blue Open Studio application which is signified to be our client. We have another Blue Open Studio application that is our server. Using TCP IP communication via the worksheets, we can now communicate between the two applications and pass data between the tags without any driver configuration required in either application. Additionally, if we now add in a third or fourth or fifth Blue Open Studio application, we can configure that application to be a server or a client or both and use TCP IP communication to communicate to one, several, or all of the other Blue Open Studio applications available on this network. So now we will look at configuring the TCP IP worksheet for communication between two Blue Open Studio applications. To configure the worksheet, we'll go over to the Project Explorer, to the COM tab, and then right click on TCP IP and select Insert. And with the worksheet that appears, it has a similar layout, a header at the top with all the appropriate fields we'll need to configure, and then the body at the bottom, which includes the fields for the local tags and the remote tags. So on the header at the very top, we have three checkboxes. Send fields, and when this box is checked, the local Blue Open Studio application send the value, but it will also send all of the tag properties for that tag. That means the min and the max in any configured alarm values along with any other configured tag properties. When the checkbox is cleared, the only values that are sent are not only the value of the tag, but also the timestamp and quality. When the read only box is checked, this limits communication to one way. No tag values can be written back to the specified server. So from the perspective of our application, we are the client connecting to a remote server. So we will only be able to read values from the remote tags and will not be able to write back to those tags if this box is checked. And then send values on connection. When this option is selected and the project runs, the client will ignore the first tag values that it receives from the server and instead send its own tag values to the server. So think of this as a initialization, where instead of the pre-existing values that are on the server or remote Blue Open Studio application, this application will ignore those and will push its own values up to the server or remote Blue Open Studio application. Below that we have the description, which we will enter in training TCP slash IP. Then below the description field, we have connection status. And this will be a tag that we enter in here. And this will give us what the current status is of the connection between the two Blue Open Studio applications. And for us, we're going to create a new tag right now. And we're just going to type it into this 
field and it will be TCP IP no slash underscore C O N N. And then when we set focus away, it'll ask if we want to create the tag. We say yes, leave the type as integer and set the scope to local. The disable field, this once again, like any other disable field inside of Blue Open Studio, it will evaluate this field as either true or false. And it could be a tag, an expression, or just a static value. And as a reminder, false is zero. True is any non-zero value. So I could put a one in here and we'll automatically disable this. If I put a tag in, I can toggle the value of that tag between zero and one or zero and any other value. And then I can enable or disable communication for this TCP IP worksheet. Then we have the server IP address field. And this is a straight text field. So we could put an IP address in, for example, 192.168.1.100. And then it'll read that in as a server IP address that this application will connect to for TCP IP communication for this worksheet. Or we could enter in a tag inside of curly brackets. And it will recognize that that does not exist. Do you want to create it? I'm going to say no. And then if you say no when creating a tag, it'll say that it's in an invalid tag. And it, do you want to set this as a comment? I'll click yes. And you see that inside of the curly brackets now, it added two slashes. That comments out that tag. Instead, I'm going to enter in the IP address of a remote Blue Open Studio application that I'm going to communicate to. That is going to be 172.16.91.64. Now, the username and password. And when we discuss security in an another video this will come into play but if you have the security feature enabled inside of blue open studio and the remote application has security selected for tcp ip communication you can enable a user that allows communication for tcp ip and you just enter in their username and password here and once again these are straight text fields but we could always put in a tag name and use it for dynamic setting of the username and password. And then in the worksheet body, we have two columns, tag name and remote tag. And tag name is the column for the local tags. And here we can right click and we can select insert tag if we want and bring up the object browser and look for a tag. But for us, we're going to create two new tags. The first one will be TCP IP underscore integer. And then I'll, I'll create the tag, leave the type as integer, set the scope to local. Then on the remote column, this is the tag that is located on the remote or server application that we're going to link to this tag. Now, if we right click, we don't get the object browser because we can't connect to the remote application to get the tag list. So we would just have to simply enter them in. For the test application that we're going to use, I'm going to enter in integer one. You notice it didn't come up and say invalid tag, or do you want to set this as a comment, or do you want to create this tag? Because it does not matter if that is a valid tag name or if even if it's spelled correctly. I could just put a bunch of garbage in there and it'll ignore it because it's not referencing the local tag database. It is referencing the tag database for that remote application. So the next line, we're going to add in another tag, TCP IP underscore string. I'm going to create the tag, make the data type string, scope to local. And then for the remote tag, I'm going to enter in string one now our blue open studio tcp ip worksheet is configured properly all we have to do is save and then we can demonstrate the application so i come up click save save a sheet number one and yes before i close the tcp ip worksheet i'm going to copy the two local tags i'm going to make sure that i'm on db1 tab of the database by and i am going to paste them in 
And then I'm also going to copy the connection status tag, paste that in, and I'll just insert a blank line here just to make it a little easier to read. And I'll close the worksheet. Okay, so now we are ready to demonstrate the application. So what I will do is I'll come up and start the runtime. And come back in. We see that we get on the con tag an error code already of 10053. Now this corresponds to the Winsock error code. So it's not any special error codes inside of Blue Open Studio that were generated or created specifically for this application. So if I bring up a web browser and I navigate to MSDN and I search for Winsock error codes, we have a list of Winsock error codes for Windows. And don't worry, this link will be in the description of the video. And we see the return code slash value. So we had 10053. So if I scroll down and I find 10053, it says WSAE con aborted. So basically what it means is that the WinSock or TCP IP connection was aborted. And then it gives you a description, uh, software cause connection abort, an established connection was aborted by the software in your host computer, possibly due to data transmission timeout or protocol error. Now, most of these are not very descriptive or very informative. Uh, however, this is a very common WinSock error for the TCP IP communication. And the reason why, if I go back in to Blue Open Studio, and I come up to tasks, the runtime is still open. It's still running the application. So we see here the status of each task. Uh, for example, the background task and core runtime status is started. And you also see a column for startup which both are set to automatic. If we come down, these two from the bottom are the two tasks we discussed earlier in the video. The TCP IP client runtime and the server runtime. And you see that the client runtime is started and that is set to automatic. You see that the server runtime is not and it's set to manual. However, in this application, we don't need the server runtime running, at least for this setup, for this test. We only need the client. But by default, in Blue Open Studio for every new application, the TCP IP server runtime task is set to manual. So even when you start the runtime, this task will not start. So what I am going to do is on the remote Blue Open Studio application, I am going to come into the tasks and I am going to start the runtime for the TCP IP server. And now you should see a little caption in the upper right hand corner, which is the remote TCP IP application. So I click OK to get out of here and you see that our connection status has went to zero. And like almost every other communication status in Blue Open Studio, zero means good connection, good communication. So now I will put a value into the integer tag. And you see that it showed up in the remote application. And now on the remote application, if I enter in a string tag, you now see that it shows up under here. Then I can, of course, come over here and I can change it to goodbye. And you see it reflected on the remote application. As I mentioned earlier, if I come back into our worksheet, and when you open the worksheet, don't worry about the password field entering in with what looks like masked characters. This is just a feature in Blue Open Studio where any password field in here, and we look at security in another video, you will see it as well. They fill the entire field with what looks like masked characters. There is no password configured in there. You don't have to worry about knowing what it is. You can even clear it out and it wouldn't cause an error. It just, every time you come back in, it will have that field entered in with mass characters. So I'm going to come here and I'm just simply going to change this from string 1 to string 11. If I save, you see that the connection is still at 0, or if I try to write a value to it, connection stays at 0 because all that we are doing is we are sending that data in to Blue Open Studio to the remote application. If I come to the remote app and I 
update the value there, you see that there is no error code that appears. And this is because we're simply saying we're sending this value off for this tag. If the tag doesn't exist, it typically will not give you an error code. The only status or error that this field looks at is actual communication. So if it cannot send the value, if it doesn't get an acknowledgement that the value was received by the remote application, then you will get an error code. Other than that, it really doesn't matter. As long as the remote application received the value, then the status field will remain at zero, meaning that it's good. So I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna change this back to string one save and now you see as soon as i saved it reinitialized communication and now i have the new value in thanks for watching if you have any questions please feel free to contact proface america technical support by phone at 1-800-289-9266 option 2 or by email support at profaceamerica.com you can also visit our website profaceamerica.com for manuals, drivers, product FAQs, and other product and software information. Thanks again, and have a great day.